In 91, I met the love of my life within a few weeks of coming down here to the Waikato. We were married three years later. Then in 97, Glenn suddenly had a seizure. I still remember the shock. It was a Friday afternoon. Doctor rings up and says, there's no time for you to come in. I'm gonna to have to tell you over the phone. You've got a brain tumor. You need to get into Auckland Hospital because we're gonna need to operate on Monday. Coming into 2002, we were having a baby, having surgery, radiotherapy, chemotherapy, all of that um, in, in the same year. Hi, Ma. In the beginning of the next year, they thought something is not right with him. And what had happened is a bacteria had got into Glenn's brain in that previous debulking surgery, and it grew. He had to actually have part of his bone flap removed because of this very nasty infection. When you find out that your brain is affected, that your CPU is going to dysfunction in certain ways, you just have no idea what that's really going to look like. And to be honest, I, I thought there was enough to deal with cancer, let alone to find that you have what's called disabilities as well. Lots of people tell me how much I'm like my dad, and if I hadn't known him myself, then I wouldn't really know who I was, where I got all my, even little things like my smile, everything, I wouldn't know where it was from. Glenn's doctor said when we, when we asked about life insurance, you know, we ca I can't do this lightly. Insurance companies really don't like it when we get this wrong. But I'm pretty sure you're going to be not with us in the next six months. So he got it paid out. And that was some seven odd years before Glenn actually died. A doctor really doesn't know exactly when you're going to die. And of course, Glenn looked like he was going to die several times. He lived at least nine years longer than they thought he would, uh, which is a long time, especially for me. It's over half my life still. When she was 18 months, he was totally clinically dying, saying his goodbyes to us. The clinical nurse manager was saying, where's he going to die? Home or hospital? We were under hospice then. He didn't die. Then when she was four, he was clinically dying again. And we were under hospice again. He didn't die. So we'd been under hospice three times. We'd outlived numerous prognoses. We'd lived so much. When he did go at 11 past 12 on the 11th of the 12th, we were there to to do what, what we'd meant to do, which was, was to be together until, until death parted us, natural death. I was there for his last breath. I was holding his hand, and so it was pretty special. I'd be incredibly nervous to see euthanasia on the table in our country. I just can't imagine what kind of conversations can happen to the vulnerable when other people project their thoughts about how someone's life is and how their illness is affecting their loved ones. It's just not okay. Let's just focus on dying naturally and dying well.